Hi everybody, and welcome to another edition of our AP Laser Workshop. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be engraving on some whiskey glasses here. Um, and we're going to be using our Lightburn program to set our files up. And we're going to be running this on our brand new 2616 uh, 60 watt laser machine. So the first thing that we want to do uh, with uh, our whiskey glass is we actually kind of want to measure out. Um, we're going to be doing a double sided engraving on this um, on one full rotation. So we're going to need to kind of build us a little bit of a template. If you watched any of our other videos, uh, like when we were doing our full circumference with a Yeti, um, this is basically the same kind of, of setup here. So the first thing we want to do is you want to measure around the top of your glass here, um, which I've got my fabric measuring tape here. Another, if you don't have a fabric measuring tape and you're using calibers, you can measure the diameter um, and then just multiply that by pi, which is 3.14. So the top of my diameter is going to be uh, 10 and 3 quarters. And there is a small taper to this particular whiskey glass here. So I'm just going to measure the bottom, which I've got about 10 and a quarter. So again, the top of my whiskey glass is going to be 10 and 3 quarter, and the bottom of my whiskey glass is going to be at 10 and 1 quarter. So we'll jump over to our computer here and dive into our light burn program. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to here to my left hand side toolbar, and I'm going to just draw a straight line. So I'm going to kind of zoom in here, click once. All this over. I'm going to right click to stop my drawing. And then I'm going to select my pick tool, which is again on my left hand side toolbar. I'm going to select my line and I'm going to make that 10.75. So with this one here, what I can actually do is hit Control D to duplicate that line. And I'm going to drag it down here towards the bottom. And then I'm just going to resize this one to 10 and a quarter. So 10.25. Now, the next thing we want to do, we want to measure our glass one more time on just our engraving area here. So if we go from the top down towards the bottom, we're looking about roughly three inches there. So I'm again going to go ahead and just duplicate the line that I already have drawn. So Control D again bring that up and then I'm going to change this size to about three inches and hit enter and then I'm just going to come over to my rotate and I'm going to rotate that 90 degrees like so and I'm just kind of I'm going to kind of use this line here as a little bit of a spacer so I can kind of see where I need to bring my other line down I'm going to zoom in just so I make sure that I am overlapping here Touching right on that edge, like so. Go ahead and grab my bottom line now, and I'm going to bring it over as well. So kind of like that. So we do have a little bit of a taper here that's going on. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and kind of grab my one line and move it out of the way. I'm going to select my top one and I'm going to come up to the top left hand corner where it's showing X position and Y position. And I want to kind of just even these out. So I'm going to make this 10 by 7. There we go. Then I can select my bottom line here. Again, I'm going to make that 10. So I know that this one is smack dab in the middle of this one here. And then we know we were uh, at the seven mark here, so we can just add three to this, which would also make that 10, like so. So I'm going to go ahead and move this line again out of my way. That is going to come into play, so we're not going to get rid of it. Shift over just slightly here. There we go. 
So I'm then going to come over and I'm going to grab my draw my line tool again. And so I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. And what we want to do is because we're at a taper, I'm going to start my line here. So click once, draw it up, and connect it here. I'm going to right click my mouse to leave it there. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing on this side here. Click once, draw it up right click and then left click to leave it there. I'm then going to select my entire box here and I'm going to group it together. That makes this kind of one solid item so if I just click anywhere on this I can move it around. I'm then going to go ahead and kind of center this back up again on my positionings to maybe 10 by 9. So what I can do with my line here is this is going to kind of be our dividing line. So I'm again going to make this 10 by 9 just to put it right smack dab in the middle here. I'm then going to select my box again and then just group this to add in my center line here. So again what we're doing is we're doing a double sided engraving here. So we're going to use this kind of like our pickup line, uh, center of our whiskey glass. Um, so we can put an image on this side here and this side here and actually have it just do a one full rotation engraving and get our images matched up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just use some text here. So I'm going to grab my text tool on my left hand side. Uh, let's do something a little bit different than an aerial. So uh, let's say nice brush script. And one nice benefit of Lightburn or a nice feature of Lightburn is underneath my font I've got this weld button here. What that means is that if I do any kind of script font it's automatically going to weld that together for me. So I'm just going to select here and make it Say make it a double and just kind of minimize this a little bit. And for right now, I'm just going to kind of place it within my, my little template here. Uh, we'll go ahead and do another set of text. Um, fashion. Right. And again, we're going to kind of put it right down in here. So again, using our coordinates, we can kind of make sure that we're, we're centered up in here. Um, and that we're going to be kind of equal distance here. 0.25, we'll make that Y positioning a 9. Hit enter. And then we're coming over from our side here. Make that a 12.5 and then a 9 on our Y. So our Y direction is just making sure that these are at the same height um, and then our X is just kind of shifting it over here. Now I am doing with two different font sizes on it so you may want to just kind of do a visual as well just to make sure this is kind of laying out correctly. So with my box now, I'm going to go ahead and select it because we've got that all grouped together. I'm going to come down to my bottom color bar here and I'm just going to change the color to make it into a separate layer. I'm select my entire image and we're going to rotate this in negative 90 degrees. Now with this box or my template, I'm going to come over here and as you can see that the blue is already set to a line and I've got the output off. So basically what's going to happen is that the machine is going to read that that is coming into a factor but it's just not going to do anything with it. Um, I'm then going to come over here to my fill which is my engrave which is going to be my text here. I'm going to double click and I'm going to increase my speed to a 10. And we're doing it with a little bit lower wattage of a machine. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and keep this at a 50 power with a line interval of a 0 
or uh, lines per inch DPI of right around 300. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and change my laser origin here. Currently I have it set for center. Again, this is kind of a user preference. As long as you're choosing one of the center locations, that's really the only thing that matters. Uh, my personal preference is I like to set it up to the top left. Uh, so I can kind of gauge where the lip of my glass is at and where my image is going to kind of fall with that, within that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and send our image over to our machine here. Uh, light burn image, hit OK. Override your existing, hit yes. All right, and we'll jump ahead over to our machine now and then let's see what we have going on in here. So I did do a little bit of prep work uh, to begin with. Now typically when I'm working with glass, um, I normally like to use a little bit of a dish soap to kind of coat the glass. That just helps ensure that you're getting a nice smooth engraving. Kind of adds a little bit of a protective barrier between the glass and the laser beam. Uh, just make sure you're not chipping or digging too much into the glass. Um, we are currently working on a, on a solution or solvent uh, that you'll be able to spray on the glasses that will help prevent it from slipping. Because I am doing a two-sided and almost a full circumference um, rotation here, um, I don't want to use that Don dish soap because I can run the risk of my tumbler actually slipping or my whiskey glass slipping inside there. So what I've opted for instead is I've actually encased it and wrapped it in some masking tape. Um, this is going to again add a little bit of a protective barrier between the um, glass and the actual laser beam. Um, I'm going to just quickly double check my focus here again. And we look good. I've already got it positioned on the top lip of my glass here. I'm going to go ahead and hit origin here. And let's just frame out to make sure we look good. And as you can see, I've got it just pinched in there a little bit too tight, which is a reason that we always want to double check. I am going to back out my rotor tool just a hair here. There we go. Allow well, for a little bit of play. All right. Go ahead and frame out now. And there we go. Much better. All right, again, that framing is always good to double check your work to make sure you're not slipping. Um, what you can also do, especially with the masking tape on there, is just to show you that this is returning back, I'm gonna go ahead and make a little mark here. And we'll go ahead and frame again one more time. And a little bit off, so I'm just going to go ahead and readjust there. So let's go ahead and hit our start button here. And while that's running, we'll go ahead and jump over to our computer. And if anyone's got any questions, All right, so feel free to add in any questions, comments, um, right into our Q&A or our chat box here. I'll make sure to answer those in real time. Uh, again, uh, just to let everybody know, we are using our new 2616 model. Um, we are running with a two inch lens, uh, which is the standard lens that comes with all of our machines. Um, we do have available uh, packages, lens packages with these as well. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you can always give our tech support line a call at 844-364-8211. Um, ask questions about the lenses, uh, the machine, the operations, any of the things that we're discussing here today. Now this here, again, we're doing a, a double-sided engraving, so this should take uh, probably about six or seven minutes. Uh, you're looking at probably about uh, three, three and a half minutes per side. Um, again, I do 
personally like to run my rotary tool a little bit slower speeds. Um, you always have the option to increase that speed. Um, I don't normally recommend going over a 15 speed, but if you're doing numerous of these, um, you're trying to get in and out quickly, uh, you may want to kind of consider that. Now I do also want to take the moment too and discuss about glass and glassware. Um, not all glass is always going to run the same. Um, there is different types of glass out there and it's really hard sometimes to know what type of glass you're buying. Um, what I would always recommend is before you order anything in bulk, uh, try to find one glass that you can order from this, maybe the same supplier uh, to get in and test that out to make sure that it's not going to chip or flake at any means. Um, when you're dealing with that, again, it's always good to sample out your glassware. Um, we've had a lot of customers that have called tech support and have made posts on our Facebook user group talking about different glasses. Um, one was an excellent uh, post, that I forget who it was that actually had made the comment or the post. Um, and basically he was saying that he went to the store to TJ Maxx, bought a very expensive glass, tried to bring it home and etch it and it just turned out horribly. He then went to the dollar store, bought a cheap glass just for a dollar or two, brought it in, ran the same image, same speed and power settings and the image turned out great. Um, again, it's, it's hard to tell if that glass is actually going to be etching well or not. Um, a lot of times what can happen if it's a poor glass quality, it can flake off. So while it looks like it's giving a nice engraving, um, it does kind of feel like it's chipping off. Uh, that is one of the reasons we do say to use like the Dawn dish soap. Everyone's got a different kind of technique behind that. Um, and please visit our Facebook group uh, for other suggestions on things to run. Um, another thing that I like to do as well is um, sometimes you may want to add in a little bit of highlight paint. Um, this isn't always necessary, but maybe you want some different colors or any, something like that. Um, this stuff here I bought at Walmart for about $1.50, I think. Um, and it is dishwasher safe. Um, they also make these acrylic paints uh, for indoor outdoor use. Um, again, just pay attention, make sure that it's saying something like dishwasher safe and it will say right on there indoor outdoor use if you're using it on stones or anything like that. Um, and this is really nice stuff too, especially if you're dealing with a lower quality glass and it seems like it's kind of flaking off on there to where you can actually kind of get those flakes out of there and then add in that acrylic paint to actually save your material. So it looks like we're on, I already moved on, I think, to our other side here. So just a few more minutes and this will be done. Um, I have somebody ask uh, how I would add the Dawn dish soap. So actually what I do is I take a little foam brush and I just put the smallest little drop of dish soap on there and with that foam brush just kind of brush it across the engraving area. Um, again, uh, if you're only doing one sided it works out well. I would not recommend doing that if you're doing a full circumference or double sided like this. All right, and let's go grab our glass here. And as you can see, we returned right to our little witness mark we had made. I'll take this out and we'll jump back over to our desk here. Peel my tape off here. ahead and use a little bit of paper towel, some Windex here to kind of get the rest of this off. Ha <laughs> ha 
And just to kind of help you see it a little bit better here, we've got this, this little black foam piece I can kind of put in here. So we can hopefully see that just a little bit better there. So there's our old fashioned and we turn it around to the other side. We've got make it a double. So again, um, this glass here um, was one of the ones I've kind of talked about, about not really knowing the quality of it. Um, so I did get a little bit of flaking on this. Oh, I just want to clean a little bit of it up, a little bit, get some of that adhesiveness off from the tape. There we go. So again, what I can do is I can add in a little bit of this acrylic paint here. Don't need very much, just a couple small little dabs like so. And then I'm just gonna kinda rub it in. And then it's gonna kinda just absorb right into that etched area there. Just like so. And so you can see adding in that highlight paint now without the, the actual foam in there, how it stands out just a little bit better. And again, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in so you can really see it. There we go, just like that. Uh, so I do see I, I have another question here. Uh, we have beer mugs with handles. It's glass, is it possible to do with a handle in the way. Um, so with the handle, that is going to be something a little bit trickier to do when you're trying to do a double side engraving. Um, I would not, because no matter what, unless that handle can freely go underneath there, um, it's going to be a little bit trickier. Um, I would probably recommend with something like that, actually maybe just running one side and flipping it over and then running the other side. Again, um, you just don't want that handle to bottom out or to come to the top and actually hit your laser head. All right, we'll leave it open here just a little bit longer for if anybody else has any questions here. Again, uh, the model that we're using here on this machine is our 60 watt 2616. Um, we've got our newer type rotary tool in here, the, the black extender. Um, as you can see, it works very well. We've used this a couple times now on both the uh, two phase and three phase, so on the smaller and larger machines there. Um, if, you, if you currently have one of our other ones, I do believe we still have a buyback program going on that if you would like to uh, return your old rotary tool, uh, you can upgrade to the newer style there um, and get a, a credit with that as well. All right. And I see we had a couple late people joining us. Again, any questions um, over anything that we've just done or you think you may have missed, uh, feel free, uh, again, always call our tech support line. We always have qualified technicians willing to help you out, answer any of the questions for you over this process, any of our other process. And again, that number is 844-364-8211. Um, if we don't have any more questions for the time being, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Um, I do appreciate everybody's joining us today. Um, I hope everyone has a great weekend and have a happy Friday. Bye, everybody.